Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. An Iranian-made Shahed drone launched by Russian forces heads towards a Ukrainian air defense system. A miss quickly celebrated by Ukrainian soldiers. What the Russians missed was this. A fake air defense system, part of an entire arsenal of decoys that has popped up around the country. Fake weapons that are as cheap to make as they are useful to deploy. An American towed howitzer costs anywhere between two to four million dollars. This one costs just a thousand dollars to make. It's essentially made up of drain pipes. But the point is, each time one of these is hit, it is a real one that is spared, and it's cost the Russians time, energy, and money to hit it. The challenge for this steelworks company that had nothing to do with arms making at all, updating their designs to keep up with the ever more sophisticated weapons arriving in Ukraine. Despite them, the fighting along the Eastern Front has been tough, Ukrainian officials acknowledge. The forest just outside the eastern town of Krimina has been a battleground for much of the war. But the counteroffensive has made its daily battles that much more intense. Yuri Mikuliak, a special forces commander, has just returned from there with his men. Behind Mikuliak, one of the Russian tanks his unit took in Irpin early in the war. He says the lack of ammunition has been chronic in this war. Ukraine, he explains, has had to use creativity as it holds the lines. Мы пытаемся какую-то применять военную хитрость, как-то э, свой боевой опыт совмещать с военной хитростью, дурить противника, изобретать какие-то новые ловушки там. A part of that effort is happening far from the front lines, in factories like this one, perfecting the art of the fake weapon. The measure of each decoy's success, how quickly it gets destroyed once in the field. TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. We're going to get a lot of pushback to this speech, I have no doubt about it. Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy vowing to go further than Donald Trump in reducing the size of the federal government. This vision is not an original vision. Excellent presidents from Reagan to Trump, have spoken to the same ideal. And I give credit to Donald Trump for taking more steps than have been taken in a generation. During his 2016 campaign for the White House, Trump made a rallying cry out of cutting the federal bureaucracy. It is time to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. Now, Ramaswamy, who was attempting to seize the label of political outsider, is making the case he would be the presidential hopeful best able to accomplish that task. I do think it takes an outsider who has, if I may say, complete and total disregard for the norms of Washington, D.C., and I'm guilty as charged on that. Speaking at a Trump-aligned think tank in Washington, Ramaswamy unveiling his proposal to eliminate at least five major government agencies, including the Department of Education, the FBI, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. It's part of a push by the political newcomer to reduce the federal workforce by 75 percent. The people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the government, not the managerial bureaucracy in three-letter government agencies. Past Republican presidents have proposed sweeping cuts to the federal government only to encounter significant obstacles. Ronald Reagan called for eliminating the Departments of Education and Energy, but both agencies still exist. Presidents can't just willy-nilly fire a million employees, abolish agencies, and do it without involvement by Congress 
And frankly, no Congress would go along with a crazy plan like this. Trump has said he wants to move the Department of Education responsibilities to the states. And Ron DeSantis has discussed closing agencies too, the IRS and Departments of Commerce, Energy and Education. But Ramaswamy goes further. Do we want incremental reform? Or do we want revolution? Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. Across the U.S., COVID-19 continues to spread, and now there's a new weapon to help fight it an updated vaccine. Part of the reason, you know, they wanted to get this out there is because while the numbers are still low, thankfully, they are going to go up. They always go up uh, as the weather gets cooler and drier. COVID hospitalizations rose about 9% compared to the week prior, but are lower than last winter's peak. Still, there's no clear picture of how many cases are out there since fewer people are testing, but officials are seeing the virus in wastewater. It's gone up significantly, so that's usually sort of a early warning system, if you will, in terms of how much COVID is out there. To help lower risk of severe illness, hospitalization or death, the CDC is now urging everyone six months and older who hasn't gotten a COVID-19 vaccine in the last two months to get the updated vaccine. CDC advisors say those ages five and older should get at least one dose. Children six months to four years who may be getting their first COVID vaccine should get two doses of Moderna or three doses of Pfizer, with at least one being an updated shot. The CDC says those who are immunocompromised should be up to date with at least three doses of COVID-19 vaccine and at least one of those doses being the updated vaccine. The new shot is updated to fend off the currently circulating viruses that cause COVID-19 by teaching the immune system to recognize spike proteins of the XBB15 viruses now spreading. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Follow the Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. Sheltering from the sweltering September heat, survivors of Morocco's earthquake spend another day coming to terms with the tragedy that has befallen this shaken community. Temporary shelters for those left homeless by the earthquake have been set up across this region. Many of the tents that you can see here have been supplied either by the Moroccan government or by local organizations and charities. But the Moroccan government has also requested assistance from members of the international community. And we've seen these international teams on the ground providing support not only on the search and rescue front, but also with the humanitarian relief effort. The immediate priorities for our team is always saving life. Uh, following on from that, where we can help medical assistance identify humanitarian needs so that even when that rescue phase does close, we've provided all the information we can to help the humanitarian relief that will follow us. Across the quake zone here in Morocco, there has also been an outpouring of support from the local community with donations of food, water and medication. On a toujours le besoin au niveau des tentes. But volunteers here tell us they still need more tents and, crucially, long-term support with the rebuild effort. The government says the reconstruction of homes lost in the disaster is a priority. But for so many impacted families, there is no telling how long it'll be before they have a real home to return to. Thanks for watching The Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out AdvocateChannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.